Who can who can explain to me what since since we talking about the man first? Okay, we talked about protect, provide, maintain. Um, maintaining is to provide what is needed over time, on a consistent basis, day to day. When a need shows up, I know I'm going to fulfill it. I'm going to maintain it. I'm going to make sure when the table. If the, the leg is hanging off the table, it's my responsibility to do what? Fix. To fix it. When the, the front door is falling off the house, it's my responsibility to do what? Fix. When she has an emotional <coughs> problem or issue, as women do, then it's my responsibility to do what? Walk away. Try to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Walk away. My responsibility to address it, yeah, right? Bad. Now, bad all right. Now let's go over to let's go over to the other side. Now, now listen, listen, listen. Now, I'm gonna start with this premise because we're gonna go over to the other side. If I didn't, if I didn't fully understand or have at least this much understanding before today or before the last couple of months of what the role of the man is. Is it safe to say that I probably don't understand what the role of the female is either? Yeah. Is it safe to say that I have the role of the female to learn? And is it safe to say that since most of the females are in the same situation that I'm in and most of my friends are in, they probably don't know what their role is either? So is it safe to first say, well, let's explain what this role is before I start disagreeing with it? Because when we look at nurture, comfort, and consolation, we think about it in a physical way. We think about it that, that man, all she, well, I, I do like, you know, the fact that, that, you know, her job is to give me some, you know what I'm saying? Take care of me. But that's not all that that means. That's not all. Just like protection, you know, protect means, it's not just saying, you know, when we go out, you know, I'll be the one to get in the fight. It means if somebody got to die and I know somebody got to die, it's going to be me. Now, when we talk about nurturing, comfort, and consolation, to nurture, what does that mean? To nurture. See, most of us have never met a real woman. Most of us have never met a wife. That's why we had a. That's why. That's why we don't want to be in, engaged. That's why we don't want to be married. Because what we met is, is 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 women who have been made hoes, women who have been made bust downs, <laughs> women who have been made. What'd you say, hoochies? Women who have been made other than themselves. That's not what. Yeah. A wise man, wise man named Elijah Muhammad said, there's no such thing as a no good woman unless she was made no good by a no good man. Now, we as men have been destroyed in the sense of who we really are. Most of us, if I say, brother, what's up, God? How you feel? Real dog. Not finna let you call me guy. Right. Why not? That's not my title. That don't fit my description. Oh. Oh, yeah, like, don't fit that. Right, fool. I hate that, man. How is God not your title? <coughs> I mean, I'm not him. You're not God? I'm not God. You, you, God. you say you. you He's inside of me, but that title, <laughs> he said. That's like me saying, what's up, fam? You feel me? Me being a man. You feel me? Me being a man. You know, that's not me. You know, especially coming into, that's like me going into a corporate building. Like, what's up, Joe? You know what I'm saying? You calling me family is incorrect? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is why, and I'm not... And I'm, I'm not 
I'm not jumping on you at all, but say, this say, is say this is them. the yeah yeah this is the this is the crux of what we're talking about. See, if I call myself a Christian, then the things that we're talking about, you shouldn't have no problem with. Right. If I say what's up, God, you shouldn't have no problem with that. If I say you family, you shouldn't have no problem with that. You know why? Because the man whom that rests upon, right? The man who Christianity rests upon, he say, look. His disciples said, you know, how do you pray? How did he respond? How did he respond? He said, our father. Our father. Our is a pronoun, right? Our means what? More than one, us, and possession. This father belongs to who? So if he's my father, then we're what? So we what? Family. Right? He didn't qualify that. He didn't say, you know, if you're a Jew, if you're a Christian, but not if you're a Muslim. He said what? Our what? So we what? We family. Right? So me and you family. Now, if I say, what's up, God? Now, say in the Bible again. Say, I created man as a living soul to be fruitful and multiply, to fill and subdue the earth. I created him in our image and our likeness. Right? If you created in the image and likeness of God, when you look in the mirror, what should you see? Solomon said, ye are all gods, children of the most high God. He said, God with a little G, not a big G. You a little God. This the big G is upstairs, but we the little G's down here. Right? So, part of the problem is we don't know ourselves. We have been taught improperly who we are. And so, if we don't know who we are, brothers say, man, you a God. He say, no, man, I ain't no God. I'm a what? Dog. <laughs> what up, dog? What up, we don't have no problem with that. What up, dog? What up, dog? But if I say, what's up, God? I got a problem with that. <laughs> now, the problem is that we have been turned exactly backwards. Because God teaches man how to what? Live. Live. Satan turns God around into a dog and turns the science of living around into what? <laughs> and the man who does that is called what? Wow. Now, the reason why we have such a problem with our female, if we see ourselves as a dog, then we see her as a female dog. <laughs> who wants to marry a bitch? <laughs> I say, I say, I feel you. I don't want to, I don't want that either. Now, a bitch don't do this. A bitch don't do this. That's what a bitch does. But a bitch don't do this. A woman does this. A female does this. Y'all feel me? We got to close up. <laughs> now, now look. We get to the crux of the problem when we understand that the definition of self of who we are as a man, see this is backwards. We start off, we never, this is called the world of reality. We live here in a world of illusion and imagination. That's where we started off. So everything that we see is warped. Everything that we judge is our whole community, all of this is warped. So now, let's look at from the proper perspective and say, well man, if I knew who I was, if I'm a God, 
What does a God do? Create. Create. See, one of the things that a husband does is he controls his environment. He exercises control with his mind because he is willing, not only willing to live to establish what it is that he desires, but he's also willing to die for that. Now, the way that you know it is because on this sheet, it says the father in the home is like God in the community. His word is his bond. Now, the mother and father at the bottom of the family structure sheet. His word is his bond, and bond is life. And he will give his life before his word will fail. Now, a father will teach, son, all you got in this world is what? Your word. Your word is your what? Your word is your bond. Now, he will say to a, a woman, as I'm learning, as I'm becoming, qualifying myself to be a husband, I will speak to a woman what? Truth. A truth. And she will say, okay, you say you a man? I'm going to test you. I'm going to find out if you're a man. And she's going to start doing all kind of crazy stuff to test you to see if what you say is true. Now, when she's through testing you, then she will say, you know what? The truth that you said, I can verify it to be true. Why? There's something that even little girls do. I'm going to read something. It's something that, this is a book called Strong Fathers, Strong Daughters, Ten Secrets Every Father Should Know. This is something that from the stage of a little girl, this is what women, because see, women, they ain't as strong as men, right? Right? So generally, generally when we get in an argument, when we get upset, the woman know, if she got sense, she know when it gets heated, a woman with sense would just dial it back and she'd say, you know what, you know, we come back at this at another time. One who has been through a taught and been through classes for sisters and women, they, she'll, she'll dial it back. Because she know the next thing that's going to come, she ain't as strong physically, so if it, if it becomes a physical conflict, who going to win? Man. She knows she's going to lose. So a woman, a woman... Who, is, who has knowledge of herself, she is always going to try, try to not beat you or not confront you physically, but she would do it on a mental level. Exactly. Like Louis, you went to doing something so she can call the police. Now, if she's not... Now, if she, now, now you're going into imagination again. Now, we're not talking about... Like she make, she'll make you say something that you... Now, you going into imagination again. You're going into illusion now. We're talking about, we're talking about a woman. All right? Now, if she is trying to get something accomplished, let's say you, ha you and your woman have a legitimate disagreement. She's going to try to, because she studies you. She studies your wants, she studies your likes, she studies your tendencies, she studies your habits, she studies your desires. You don't study her like that. We don't study women like that. Exactly. We out in the world working, doing what we do. She's sitting there watching us all the time. And so are the daughters, sitting there watching us. If you have a daughter, I want you to really pay attention to this because they are constantly watching. This is something that... Um, this is something about daughters. Now check this out. Y'all all right? This is a, a message. This was written by um, a woman who had a strong father. And she had a loving relationship with a father. And her father was, was one of the most important figures in her life. And so she wrote a book to share with other fathers. Because she saw a lot of girls who she grew up with or a lot of her friends who didn't have a strong father like she did. So she was sharing, she's trying to share with other men the things that her father did with her that really made a difference in her life. 
So this ain't a mad, you know, this ain't no woman who's mad and all that. This is one who's like, I had a good dad, and I just want to share with y'all things that my good dad did with me. And I'm going to share with you a few secrets. Now, it's talking about leadership, a father's leadership. She says, when your daughter is born, she recognizes your voice is deeper than hers, than her mother's. As a toddler, she looks up at your enormous face and realizes that you are big, smart, and tough. In her grade school years, she instinctively turns to you for direction. She's talking about the father. Whatever outward impression she gives, her life is centered on discovering what you like in her and what you want from her. Now listen, this is a little girl, but the little girl grows up to be what? This is how women think. She knows you are smarter than she is. She gives you authority because she needs you to love and adore her. She can't feel good about herself until she knows that you feel good about her. So you need to use your authority carefully and wisely. Your daughter doesn't want to see you as an equal. She wants you to be her hero, someone who is wiser and steadier and stronger than she is. Now this is talking about a daughter but remember, the daughter grows up to be what? A mother. So this is talking about how your wife thinks, how your woman thinks. She can't feel, I'm going I'm to go back, she can't feel good about herself until she knows that you feel good about her. So you need to use your authority carefully and wisely. Your daughter doesn't want to see you as an equal. She wants you to be a hero, someone who is wiser and steadier and stronger than she is. The only way you will alienate your daughter in the long term is by losing her respect, failing to lead, or failing to protect her. If you don't provide for her needs, catch them words, if you don't provide for her needs, she will find someone else who will. And that's when trouble starts. Don't let that happen. Nowadays, the idea of assuming authority makes many men uneasy. It smacks of political incorrectness. Pop psychologists and educators have told us that authority is suffocating, obtrusive, and will crush a child's spirit. Fathers worry that if they push their kids or establish too many rules, they'll just rebel. But the greatest danger comes from fathers who surrender leadership, particularly during their children's teen years. Authority is not a threat to your relationship with your daughter. It is what will bring you closer to your daughter and what will make her respect you more. Most women, they're going to buck your control. They're going to buck our authority. But what she's saying is, guess what? That's really what they what? Trying to do. What they want. Exactly. They want the, but they're going to do what? They're going to test you. They're going to rebel. Because they're just like, a, just like a horse. And that's not a put down. A horse is the most intelligent beast of the field. But there's no horse. There's no wild horse that's going to just let you get on his back and ride. None. None. You got to break that horse. You have to prove to the horse, look. No. No. That's what you're talking about. Use your authority wisely. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to groom you. I'm going to fulfill your needs. And in exchange for that, I have a role for you. When I need to go, when I need a ride, when I need a ride, I want to ride. Right? <laughs> but in order for that horse to submit, because it's not, it's, it's not that it's unnatural for the horse to submit to the, to the man. Because the man is the God and ruler of the earth. So it's natural for the horse to submit and allow the man to ride on the horse's back. However, the horse is not going to do that unless the man proves that he's qualified to ride. That makes sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, in fact, girls who end up Wait, here we go. Authority is not a threat to your relationship with your daughter. It is what will bring you closer to your daughter and what will make her respect you more. In fact, 
Girls who end up in counselors' offices, detention centers, or halfway homes are not girls who had authoritative fathers, quite the opposite. Troubled young women spend most of their time in counseling describing the hurt they felt from their fathers who abandoned them, retreated from their lives, or ignored them altogether. They describe fathers who failed or who were afraid to establish rules. They describe fathers who focused on their own emotional struggles rather than those of their daughters. They describe fathers who wanted to avoid any conflict and so shield away from engaging their daughters in conversation or challenging them when they made bad decisions. Your natural instinct is to protect your daughter. Forget what pop culture and pop psychologists tell you. Do it. And be ready. Your daughter wants you to be an authority figure. But as she matures, she will likely test you to see if you're serious. Dads, as a rule, know, adolescent, know that adolescent boys will eventually start to challenge them. The one-on-one -on -one basketball games will get more competitive. The son will start to buck dad's authority. Let me tell you a secret. Many daughters challenge their fathers, too. They'll dive into a power struggle with you, not to see how tough you are, but to see how much you really care about them. So remember that when she pushes hard against your rules, failing, crying, that you are mean or unfair, she is really asking you a question. Am I worth the fight, Dad? Are you strong enough to handle me? Make sure she knows the answer is yes. Now how does that relate? How does that relate? Yes, sir. How does that relate to a grown woman? She does the same thing. She does exactly the same thing. Go ahead. Again, they do it without even knowing it, right? That's so in their who nature. Gave them who gave them that? That's in their nature from God. That's in their nature. Now, okay, because okay, honestly, I don't, I don't, she said use your authority wisely, though. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that into account to the, to the whole, to the whole piece of it, the whole piece you just read in the book. <laughs> mm -hmm. Who is the first male? Who is the first man that a daughter or a son spends a lot of time with? Who is the first figure, the first role model as a man that the son or daughter sees? The first daughters when they look for a, a man to marry, when they look for a man who they like, college years, you know, high school years, unconsciously, <laughs> unconsciously, they look for the first man that they fell in love with. The first man that they fell in love with was their father. So they look for a man who looks like, acts like, sounds like their father. No. 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 This is this is a natural. No, this is a natural process. This is a natural process. That uh, we we'll, we'll get back to that. We ain't going there right now. Go ahead. No, I think that way because how my um sex baby mama acted. Like sometimes when she been around her father, she always. Think me as a father, like anytime she needs some shit, ask me. Mm -hmm. you know, I guess until the baby came, it was like a whole other level. Mm -hmm. She wanted everything. Mm -hmm. How many of us have daughters? How many of us have daughters? One of the things that she was saying, if you have a daughter, um, if you have a daughter, you should understand that the first man that she's going to fall in love with is you. And understand that, when, like what this uh, woman said in this book, she said that your daughter will not feel good about herself until she knows that you feel good about her. So one of the things that from day one, I told my daughter from day one is how beautiful she is, how pretty she is, how smart she is. I don't care if she was ugly as sin. She'd still be my pretty girl. You want us to do this now? Excuse me, I'm sorry. Because 
you have to you have to put in them. See, you never want you never want your daughter to hear I love you from a man and then that be something that she ain't never heard a man say before. And she just gets so excited because somebody says she's pretty, she's beautiful, and I love you. You should be telling your daughter, I love you, every time you say something to her. Every third word should be, I love you, and how beautiful you are, and how intelligent you are, and how, how proud daddy is of you. Because you don't want, like she just said, don't let, don't let her go outside your home looking for that because she didn't get it at home. Because if she don't get it at home, she will look for it out there. And the first time some hard say, I love you, baby. So, now she done far, fell out. Ha! Ah! Somebody done finally said, I love you. That's what's wrong with, well, we talking about all these women and this, that, and the other, all this that come up. Because they didn't have a father at home. Because no one was giving them what they needed from a man. So the first man who told them that and lied, they had no defense for it. So look here. Um, we're going we're gonna to close it on up. <laughs>